Video games is a space that's evolved uh, very rapidly, but despite all the great things about video games, they're trapped in a screen. They'll never be able to fully replicate that emotional connection that people form with physical things in the real world. Anki Drive is a racing game that takes place in the real world. It's played on a mat that you can roll out anywhere you want and functions as a track, and the cars are like Hot Wheels with brains. They can move around on the track by themselves with really advanced AI. They can sense their surroundings, including the boundaries of the track, as well as the other cars on the track, and they can find the best route by themselves. Or you can control the entire experience on your mobile device. Uh, I'm going to let you just put them on the track and give them a push anywhere you want. <laughs> as you can tell, they don't like going the other way. They have a preferred mode of, mode of direction. And this becomes the, uh, you know, the most basic necessity, is that they understand exactly where everything is. And so they can uh, set their speed very precisely. They can move faster. They can move slower. And um, all of this is uh, being controlled both on the car and through the phone. The cars, they're doing a lot of processing. 500 times a second, they're actually sensing the, the track and their environment understanding where they are and they're adjusting their uh, motors and their controls in order to execute the trajectories that they want to execute. On the phone side or iPod Touch or whatever device is running the game, we in effect have a, um, a virtual understanding of what's happening physically. So if one character shoots and another car is in front of it, the game will understand that. That level of realism is something that uh, for gameplay like this has never been possible physically. Let's say we wanted to give the uh, yellow car a uh, weapon. Weapons so now the yellow car has a gun, and you can actually use that to, uh, <laughs> to attack another car. And again, this works because they understand where they are, they understand where the other ones are. Everyone always feels sorry for the silver one, so uh, we'll bring him back to, uh, to life, and this time we give him a, uh, something we call a tractor beam, which is kind of a special ability to suck in another car. And so, these are, <laughs> and he's kind of a showboat, so he shows off afterwards. Anki Drive is launching with four cars, and each has its own unique personality. The red one I played with, Ro, was a defensive car. It has shields and those kinds of weapons. The abilities are customizable by the user. You can upgrade them any way you want to emphasize the traits that you want to emphasize. In the gameplay, the base classes are slightly different, just like you would have in a role-playing game. You would have. Uh, you know, a warrior and a mage, and they might be um, they might be similar to start, but they're still kind of fundamental skills that they're better at or worse at. And we want to amplify that even further on the uh, on the digital side, where not only do you start with slight differences, but you can amplify those over time by really upgrading your vehicle in a way that makes sense for you personally. Let's say uh, you've earned a lot of upgrade points, and now you want to actually improve your character, just like you would in a video game. So you go to something we call the garage, and if you select it, you'll open up a uh, virtual representation of that car. And it's a virtual representation of this specific uh, uh, silver car. You see its statistics, you see um, what upgrades it has, and so you see it has a tractor beam and it has a speed upgrade, and so if you look at the tractor beam, it's, uh, you can see what it does and how it interacts with the car. You see that the, um, uh, you have an overdrive which increases your max speed. Speed. And so if you select it, now all of a sudden your car is physically upgraded and it's superior and those upgrades stay with the car. It's not the device, it's the car. And so if you go to a friend's house and you let him play with your car on your device, he'll see it and it'll, it'll still have all of its upgrades and all of its customizations that you've selected. Again, everything is completely defined by the software side and so as we release new extensions both on the software side and on the physical side, Every single character and uh, gameplay uh, element that you've kind of built up over that time, it will carry over. And that's one of the great parts is that over time, the experiences will expand, but your development of this particular character is something that's a constant that will stay with it. But when you look at, uh, at Anki Drive and what we built, it's not just about a racing game, it's about a platform where we uh, give physical characters the ability to understand their situation and their environment and to come to life with a purpose, with an intention, with a personality. And that is, uh, that is something that is powerful well beyond the version of Anki Drive that's going to be available at launch. That's something that actually has a really deep future and is in some sense uh, kind of a, a very different category of entertainment that hasn't existed before. The technology behind Anki Drive is undeniably cool, but Anki Drive is asking a lot of customers. For $199, you get the starter kit, which comes with one track and two cars. Each additional car is another 69 bucks. 
That's $9 more than a standard retail video game. And of course, that's all assuming that you already own a recent iOS device. I had fun with Anki Drive in the brief time that I spent with it. And Anki is pitching it as an ecosystem that's going to evolve and grow over time. And it seems like it could be a really good jumping off point for some awesome technology. But right now, at launch, it's hard for us to see how this could really take off with the barriers to entry that it has.